Explain to us what this is, because this is not necessarily a ban, is it? It's more like a license. Is this something similar to what we're seeing here in the U.S. when it comes to Huawei? It's, it's, there are similarities, but what's happening right now between Japan and South Korea is that if you're a company in Japan that sells certain key materials to South Korean suppliers, you have to apply for a license in order to sell those. And approval of the license could take up to 90 days. Now, that's an eternity in a very fast-moving industry like chip making um, and like display making. Those are the two types of products that would be most affected. And there are major South Korean companies Samsung and SK Hynix in particular that really specialize in these products, particularly memory chips. And those are some of the, those are some of the products that would be affected. That in turn uh, would, would really disrupt the global supply chain of things like smartphones, other computing devices that rely on memory chips and rely on displays. Think of the uh, Samsung foldable phone. That's just one example. Um, but the list goes on and on and on. So there's a lot of ways where companies throughout the electronic supply chain could be affected by this. Uh, Tom, what is the worst case scenario here? Because it's not really in the interests of either Japan or South Korea to see this thing escalate too much further, is it? Yeah, we've talked to analysts who really look at these materials, and they've told us that uh, certainly, and we're already seeing the impact on South Korea's largest companies, uh, including Samsung, uh, losing billions of dollars in market capitalization over the last several days. Um, but this could also backfire and hurt some of the smaller Japanese companies that specialize in these materials. Um, so those are some of the most immediate. Um, Possible beneficiaries, Taiwan Semiconductor, for example, Micron, if you have a situation where uh, buyers of these products from, from, from the Korean companies have to look elsewhere. So uh, a Taiwanese company, a U.S. company, Micron, those are some potential beneficiaries. But anybody who needs the supply, and remember that South Korea accounts for about 60 percent of uh, the supply of some of these products. Anybody who relies on those, China, the U.S., um, major uh, smartphone manufacturers, for example, could be affected. Um, what we're seeing now is some of the companies are looking for ways to, uh, looking for alternatives, looking for different places that they can both source the materials, uh, but also procure the chips and the, the displays. So there's lots of contingency plans that are being put into place.